Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda. I'm still sitting in a sprinkle chair. And this week, I am caking a giant takeout box of Chinese fried rice. It's one of my favorite foods. To begin baking this cake, I baked eight pounds of my ultimate chocolate batter in an 11 by 15 rectangular pan. My cake is cooled and leveled, and now I need to cut it into four equal portions which involves a ruler. That's why I'm smiling. It's quite um, tricky to level a rectangular cake. Sometimes the center isn't as level. So I took the opportunity to look at each little rectangle and make sure it was level. Now it is time for Sir Squeeze-a-Lot to help me. I never call him Sir Squeeze-a-Lot anymore. He's just Sir Squeeze. We've sort of shortened it. Yeah, he's that cool now. Yeah. Soon it'll just be Sir. Just call me Sir. Just call me Sir S. I think he's gonna go through a call me Squeeze phase, personally. Oh, okay, Squeeze yes. phase, I like that. Okay. Speaking of Sir Squeeze a lot, Squeeze, Sir Squeeze, what was it, Squeeze phase? Squeeze phase, sure. S squeeze phase. <laughs> this week, we've got all the tools I use on sale at howtokickit.com, including Sir Squeeze, in our bundle up sale. Are people bundling up all over the world, or is it still just us? <laughs> The simple syrup has soaked in and now it is time to fill and stack all four of my pieces of cake with Italian meringue buttercream. I love the look of like chocolate cake and white buttercream. I just love the way it looks. It's so satisfying to me. Once it's completely filled, I place the cake in the fridge to chill. Now that my buttercream is nice and chilled, it is time to carve this into the shape of a takeout box. So what I need to do is cut, I haven't said A-line in a while. Yeah, we haven't actually. What? I need to make A-line cuts on all four sides of this cake. So to help me measure, I placed a cake board on top that was a half inch smaller all the way around the cake. Then I made a mark with my knife along the sides of that cake board. And then I used a ruler and the tip of my knife to um, draw a line on the sides of the cake from that top mark down to the bottom corner. Now I'm using my serrated knife. I cut two opposite sides first, then I turn the cake, once again use my ruler to make those marks and cut the two remaining sides. Okay. So it's like an upside down takeout box at this yeah. point. It's always start upside down and always end right side up. <sighs> it's like my day. <laughs> once I'm happy with the shape, I crumb coat and chill my cake. While my creme coat is chilling, I'm going to make the flaps that will become the lid of the box. So you know how takeout boxes sort of open like this? I need to make those flaps. So what I decided to do, and what's really easy to do at home, is I took some cardboard, the same type of cardboard that they make cake boards out of, but a thin piece, and I cut the shape of my flaps. And why I'm choosing to do this is for two reasons. One, to help them be sturdy. I won't have to worry about breaking them. And I can leave some exposed cardboard at the bottom that will go down into the cake and then help support the flap. Whereas if it was solid gum paste, even pushing that down into the cake could break it and make it soggy. Before applying my gum paste to my cardboard, I need to brush on a thin layer of clear piping gel, lay it on carefully, pushing out any air bubbles, and then I flip the cardboard over and with a sharp paring knife, cut away the excess gum paste. Once you cover the one side, also make sure to trim the gum piece at the bottom nice and straight because that's what will meet your cake when we push the cardboard in. Now that all four flaps are covered on one side, we're gonna flip them all over and you guessed it, do the same thing on the other side. The only difference here is at the ends, we also wanna just fold the gum paste over so we don't see that line of cardboard through at the end of this process. Now, you can answer this. What do I do next, Jocelyn? You ice the cake and chill it. Over on our new channel, How to Cake It Step by Step, we have some fun cake compilations going on. You can click right here to see my four hot drinks cake compilation. You can just veg at home watching our four hot drinks cake compilation wearing your 99 Problems hoodie, which is also a part of our bundle up sale. See how I bundled up all that information? It's time to measure with a ruler again. Did I mention my love of rulers? 
We want to take these measurements so that we can roll our white fondant into slabs that we will use to cover all four sides and the bottom of this cake. Roll your fondant slabs just slightly wider and higher than every side and the bottom. It is time to cut and apply them to the cake. So first I'm going to apply the bottom just because the cake is already upside down. Now it's time to cover the sides of the cake. So the first thing I want to do is take the two slabs that are meant for the sides and trim them to the exact height of my cake. And then I lay them up against the side, smooth it on, and to trim the excess, I use a sharp knife and I sort of stand over the cake looking down. That way I know I'm running my knife along the exact same A-line angle as the cake. Once the excess is trimmed from both sides, now I can cover the front and back of my takeout box. Place the slabs on the front and back one at a time, smooth it on, and then again, using my paring knife and a slow hand, trimming that excess fondant on the A-line, like keeping a close eye on it. I kind of like wink when I do it. I know you know what winking is, but I acted it out for you. <laughs> If you like Chinese takeout, or rulers, or T-squares, or winking while making A-line cuts and fondant, please share this video. I'm sure the last reason is going to be the most popular. That's gonna be the biggest number of shares. Of course, sure. of course. Yeah. So now my Chinese takeout box is all covered, all trimmed, and you know what I wanna do? I'm still the seam hider. <laughs> So I just want to address those seams. Now to be fair, a takeout box does have some seams. It does, yeah. But I didn't want them to be like too pronounced. And I'm addicted to seam hiding <laughs> also. So I took some royal icing, I softened it a little bit and just used a small spatula to cover those seams. The next thing I have to make are the flaps because I should have held a takeout box. What's yeah. wrong with me? Jocelyn, I'm talking about these flaps. For this, I roll out Guess what, more white fondant, but I roll it thinner than I did for the slabs that covered the cake. And then I had made myself a template that's in this sort of triangular shape and cut out four of those pieces and then I glued them onto the cake folding over each other. I chose piping gel to glue the flaps onto the sides of my cake. It's a little bit sturdier than water. And another note, when you overlap, don't press too hard because you don't want cracking. You see how like it's nicely folded over, but you're using fondant. So if you press too hard, you might get some cracking where it overlaps. And you might get fingerprints. <gasps> Okay, so it is time to paint the logo on the front of my Chinese takeout box. We looked up how to write the word cake in the proper characters and I was assured, reassured that it was both correct in Mandarin and Cantonese. So you guys tell me if that's right. Who, did, who on the team did Pierrette. this? Okay, let's just, guys. We're just throwing you under the bus, <laughs> Pierrette. They're like, who's Pierrette? Today? You get to know her. Yes, yeah, so she sent me the characters. She assured me it was correct in both Mandarin and Cantonese. And if it's not, let it go. Let's put her Instagram on the screen. <laughs> and now what I'm going to do is lay this template on the front of my cake. I mapped it out, removed the template, and then by hand went over it very carefully with this food coloring marker, so a red marker, perfecting sort of all the lines in the symbols. That was nerve wracking. One wrong move, one wrong move. And it says something totally different and it's, I won't even know what it says. <laughs> I won't even know, I might have made a mistake. I, made, I might have made like one line too thick and now it says groundhog. I don't know, I don't know. I it's need so you to true. let me know. <laughs> I did notice something while my cake was laying on its back. I did not patch the seams of the flaps I added to the sides. So I hid the seams in the same way I did before, a bit of thinned royal icing and a small spatula very carefully. You never wanna to add too much royal icing, it will just look clumpy. You know what I don't do enough of? That was actually my 2018 resolution. <laughs> More seam hiding? More seam hiding. So I wanted to make some fun things to go with this cake. So of course I thought of fortune cookies and chopsticks. To make some sugar fortune cookies, I colored some gum paste the color of fortune cookies, which I think I did really well considering I had no fortune cookies on hand. 
You roll out your gum paste nice and thin and then use a circle cutter to cut out a circle. And then you, uh, what did I do? I want to say it right. <laughs> I want to say it properly. Now you take that circle, fold it in half, and use a little bit of piping gel at the top of the circle to glue the fold together. To make sure that it doesn't collapse on itself, you use cotton balls. Mm -hmm. So you put a cotton ball in either side in the opening. Then you want to have a mug nearby and you pick it up by the ends and you fold it over a mug, down over a mug. Okay, and then you allow these cookies to dry. In the meantime, I need to make the little tiny papers that the fortunes are written on. So I roll out some white gum paste as thin as I possibly can, and then I use a ruler and a really sharp paring knife to cut little strips. And then I didn't want them to dry just completely flat, so I picked them up and gave them like a little bit of life, a little bit of wave, and dried them in different positions. And once they're dry enough, you want to use a, the thinnest food coloring marker you can find and a very light hand. <laughs> Gum paste is really fragile. The thinner it is, the more fragile it is. So some of these might break just when I'm writing on them. Write whatever you want. If you guys have a good idea of what I should have written, leave a comment below. There's gonna be some good ideas. Leave them below. I took those fortune cookies off the cup, used tweezers to pull out the cotton. The cotton is not right. part of the eating process. <laughs> no. Okay. Thank goodness you clarified. I just want you to know. <laughs> I actually dusted a little bit of cocoa along the outside edge of the fortune cookie just with a small paintbrush just to make it look baked, right? Just put a little bit of piping gel on the end of the fortune and popped it inside the opening. Be gentle. To make the chopsticks that I want to stick into this takeout box, I am using some more gum paste, also colored with ivory, and I have two bamboo skewers basically enveloping. Look at that! Wow! I am enveloping some bamboo skewers in my sort of natural wood gum paste. And then once it's completely covered, I use my nonstick rolling pin to roll them out, making sure they're nice and flat. And then I use a ruler and a sharp knife to cut around where the skewer is so that I get more of a chopstick shape. You know what I mean? And at the top, I just use my knife to make a little indent to look like the part where you would break them apart. You know when you get takeout food, they give you like the cheaper chopsticks, uh -huh. right? They don't give you the good ones. Uh -huh. Once they're dry enough, I again use a food coloring marker. This time I use brown. And I just draw some light lines in one direction. And at the top of the chopstick, I dot it with the brown marker. And now for a final touch to make these lines look more natural and seamless, I'm going to use a little bit of clear alcohol and Ivory. Ivory. Oh, yeah. okay. And I, I use a paintbrush and brush that on in the same direction as the lines I drew. And this way I'm sort of blending them and dulling them and making them look a little bit more natural. And now we can set these aside to dry. It's time to make my Chinese fried rice. I went to the bulk store and I found these organic rice puffs. So what I'm mixing together is this organic puffed rice some dried salted peas, because I love sweet and salty. Then I'm using some dried papaya that I'm going to chop into little squares to look like chopped carrot. Guys, yes. I sometimes wish we had like an 80s background <laughs> sitcom noise. <laughs> then I'm using some dried papaya that I'm going to chop into little squares to look like chopped carrot. And for the meat, I'm using Tootsie Rolls, okay? Slice the Tootsie Rolls with a sharp knife, and then when I have each slice, I turn it on its side and use my small fondant rolling pin to roll them out and flatten them. And then, I use a tool that I have had in this kitchen forever, but never use, and it's called a fondant crimper. I bought this in England, like, in the year 2000. <laughs> I just pinched the Tootsie Roll to create like a meaty texture. Yeah. I am going to use a little bit of pineapple jam, which I strained. If you can find pineapple jelly, just you just want a jelly that's kind of light. And I chose to use pineapple because it will add more flavor as opposed to just clear piping gel, which is just sweet. I also like the pot of pineapple because it makes me think of like sweet and sour sauce. Why didn't we order fried rice on the day I made this? Yeah, you should have. So I'm using this jam and I'm just going to stir all of these ingredients together. Now unfortunately, How to Cake It doesn't have a cake out service where we can deliver this delicious cakeified fried rice to you, but we do have 
a sprinkle service. I like saying that in my sprinkle chair. This feels right. It's so good. Mm -hmm. Join our monthly sprinkle service at howtokickit.com and get delicious gourmet sprinkles delivered right to your door every month. It's time to handle it. Ooh. My takeout box needs a handle. See this little thingy? Basically worried about it not knowing how I was gonna do it until I got to this point. Cody and I had an aha moment together. We both went, a coat hanger. Oh. I used a coat hanger. It's perfect. I used like a coated wire coat hanger and I had to use wire cutters to cut it. Wow. Yeah, that's not easy. Some <laughs> seamless footage here. I'm like, don't show my face in that footage. So I also used pliers to bend the hanger. I, to, it was really hard to bend. And now I'm rolling my gum paste. First, a longer piece to cover the main part of my handle. Wrap it around uh, as neatly as I can and cut away any excess, but still leaving it quite rounded. And then I roll out another piece, cut two strips and cover the sides. And I try to mend the seam as well as I can. I brushed on some vegetable shortening onto the surface and then I used a nice soft makeup brush to brush on some silver luster. A lot of things are like a first for Cody. So when I used luster, he was like, wow, that looks really silver. Like I get a lot of great feedback. I'm like, oh, yes, it is silver. And that's what I intended. I need to add the lid to hold it in place or the flaps that make up the lid. Now I insert the flaps on either side of the takeout box, just sort of adjust them, get them into place, and then I do the front and back. This is when cake decorating comes to a head, like you do all this work, and at the end of the day, I could wreck this cake at this point. You know what I mean? It's still just a cake. I can't touch it too much. I have to be careful not to touch the front where it says cake. I, I have to be careful of so many things. So finally I decided to get them in place and they all have to be touching just a little bit. And then I used a little bit of royal icing inside the lid. And of course, royal icing around the seams of where I added the lid. So between the flaps and the cake. To help these flaps stay in place, I'm gonna use my masking tape trick. So what I do is I wrap masking tape around the flaps backwards. So the sticky side is not up against the cake, it's outside and I just keep wrapping it and this will just help them stay in place and dry. It is time to add the handle to this cake. So what I need to do is just make a little mark on the sides of my cake where I should insert the wire. And then really carefully, um, sort of stretch the handle and insert it into the cake. The tricky part about this is the cake is completely white and the handle is painted silver. And luster goes where it wants. So the more you get it wrong or sort of rub it up against the cake, you'll get silver everywhere, so be really careful. Yay! It's time to fill this cake with sweet fried rice. Mm. I used my measuring cup and I scooped the rice in to fill the takeout box. This was so fulfilling. I don't know why. If I was fulfilling, no, I was fulfilled filling the takeout box. I get it. Yeah. I get it. More bundling. But I'm not done. I need to add my chopsticks down into the fried rice and don't forget the fortune cookies. Click here to watch my four amazing kids birthday cakes compilation and here to watch my four hot drink cake compilation over on step by step, no, how to cake it step by step. I will be back next Tuesday. I wonder what I'm making. I already know. <laughs> well, I hope so. <laughs>